and here we go. Oh, and here we go. Can't get it back in the bag. Okay, we might just have to give up. What's going on today, Internet? Selfish here with Retrospect. Today, we are going to take a look at the 2024 X5. I believe this is presented by 696. I'm not positive. There's names all over this thing, but I believe that that's where it gets pinpointed to. There is some differences this year. Now, the X5 is a naming scheme that gets used on multiple handhelds every year because we're not creative with naming things, apparently, in this market. But this particular one has some differences, and it might just be intriguing, or it might not be. Let's take a look. Here we have it, the X5, all packaged up and ready to have a little review taken of it. The only reason why we know it's the X5 is because the model number is actually on the front here. I'm going to put up on the screen here real quick how this is advertised. And it's advertised like the women's and men's something something or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it will be here on the screen here. And you'll be able to take a look at how the listing was. This is the newly upgraded one for 2024. I have been assured that this is an updated device for this year, and I've reviewed a few X5s before. This one I have not. So we'll take a look at the box here real quick. This We got our model on here, our color and uh, memory card setup. We are going to be kind of looking at some of this stuff because it doesn't actually really tell you what's inside of this. I will put up some specs here. We'll go over what I think is in it based off of the information that they give you. Uh, it talks about the joysticks, the emulator, the memory card. On the back here, we have this exact same information that's on the sides. Not sure why that information is on both. This is not machine washable and soaked. So as long as it's not soaked after being machine washed, I think you're going to be okay. All right, let's take a look inside here. So we will put this aside here. Here's their X5. And we do have that really high quality clear plastic on the inside here. So you know it's going to be a Primo device. We do have our USB-A to USB-C cable. Now this is a 5 volt 2 amp or 5 volt 500 milliamp to 1000 milliamp battery cable. And our paper accordion here. Oh good look at that. I got the English on the first try. Uh, it just gives you a battery notice. I was just wondering if it told us what is actually in here for a chipset, so I don't have to open it, but it does not look like it contains any of that information. And here we are going to take a look at the X5, the 2024 edition. Let's start off by pulling a little plastic off her, huh? Ooh, that's probably one of the most satisfying ones I've had in a while. Very nice, very nice. It is very light. This is a very, very light handheld. Holy cow. Let's go over the I.O. real quick, and then we will get into specs, and I'll test out a couple games here for you. On the top here, we have nothing. We always start at the top, but on the back, we do have an L1 and R1, but no L2 or R2. Now, I've often joked that you really don't need the L2, R2, because the games that we're playing on these probably don't even need these first two. And then I recently figured out about a month or two ago that I really do use those L2, R2s or whatever combination in retro art for hotkeys. So we're going to be missing a couple hotkeys here. Other than that, though, I don't think it's going to affect our gameplay at all. There are four screws in the back that hold together, which is good to know because we are going to have to probably pull this apart to figure out what actual chipsets inside of it. On the left-hand side over here, we do our volume up and down. And on the right-hand side over here, we do have our memory card. And this is interchangeable, and it looks like there is a 64 gig in there, so it is true to what was on the box. Good to know. On the bottom here, we do have our power. We do have our 3.5 hole, and we do have our C hole. Now, this is interesting that the power is on the bottom, so that's something that's a little bit unique to this device as well. And we have seen that in some devices, especially recently. You look at, like, the M19. Nope, not that one. Just kidding. Just kidding, not the M19. If you look at the M18, this is a big honky boy. It's got no buttons anywhere else but on the bottom. And that's just for your power. So in conclusion, we seem to be seeing it more in the budget category handhelds versus the other ones. But that's okay. On the front here, we do have our screen. Now, they're trying to tell me that this is a 4K 1920 by 1080 screen. I don't believe that that's true, but we'll see that on the specs. We do have a front-facing speaker. I believe it is a 1-volt speaker. Don't quote me on that. I couldn't find any actual information on it, but that's typically what would be in a device like this. We do have our joysticks. These are considered 3D rockers for eSports. I don't know why, but these do not have an L3 or R3, so they do not click. We do have our start and select very clicky buttons, and we do have our function button, which I believe actually might work on this device, unlike some of the how kitties we see with this function button on here. We do have our ABXY. These actually sink pretty low into the shell. They don't quite go underneath, but these are sinking pretty low, which can be a problem. I don't know that it will be on this. They don't feel terrible, honestly. These are some better ones in some of the ones that I've reviewed recently. And then we do have our D-pad, which is a problem. This D-pad actually goes flat underneath the shell. So that's going to be an issue, which maybe, I always like to make this joke, but I know this isn't why they did it, is why they put the joysticks up on top, because it's going to have to be joystick-centric versus D-pad-centric. This is going to be extremely difficult for doing all kinds of fighting moves, for instance. This also rocks pretty good, so if you're hitting... 
If you're hitting down, you're actually hitting left and right at the same time. So you're hitting a diagonal. And same with up. No, nah, up's not as bad. If you go west-east, you're still hitting diagonals because everything's moving. Interesting. We'll see how that plays out here. Let's get her fired up. And while this is firing up here, we will throw the specs up on the board for you. Why is it so loud? Oh, no. That's not one. How loud does it really get? Wow. We might have to just completely turn the volume off because that is too loud. You're going to have to bear with me here. I do have a tablet I normally cheat and read off of in order to get you guys the specs. And apparently, with all the recording I've been doing, the battery has died on me. So, I'm going to try to do this here from the side. So, audio might get a little jacked here. We'll, we'll hopefully. Hopefully, it'll be okay. So, the system on this is a bt 569 and it's A7. That's supposed to be the operating system. I don't know if that's just some custom build that 696 did on this particular device, but that is what they do have listed. It does have a 3.5 inch, what they're calling a 4K display. I would barely call that an IPS display, but that's what they're calling it with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Don't believe that that's true. I have devices with way less resolution that look better than this. Now, for a value handheld or budget handheld, this is not the worst screen that I've ever seen. Oh my god, I'm hitting my head again. Son of a... I have no idea what the GPU is in here, but it's supposed... The CPU that's listed is a 32-bit ARM quad-core Cortex-A7 at 60 hertz. Some of those numbers don't quite add up most of the time, unless it's a processor that I haven't seen before, which is very possible. I don't believe that that's gonna be the case. My assumption is gonna be that this either has an ATM 7051 in it or the RK3326. Only reason why I might think the 3326 is they're very readily available right now with how many companies have been using them for the last year and a half. Prior to that though, the 7051 was a very popular chipset and there's still plenty of them out there and we do see that come up in a lot of budget handhelds. Doesn't perform nearly as well, but it'll get the job I've done sort of through PS1. So that's going to be my guess, but we will open this up and we are going to find out what's inside of it as long as it's not sanded off because I've had a hell of a run with that this year too. For additional memory, we do have the TF slot. This year it'll handle 64 to 128 gigs. Your operating system also runs off that, so just be aware of that when you are loading games on here. You cannot load games directly into the actual file folders on here either. There is one of those stupid game folders on here where you have to drop and drag your games into a folder that says games, and then it leaves them out of whack. Now, the good thing is, if you're just going to put your own games in, that'll work fine. Now, you're going to probably want to clone this card anyways, because you saw it when I pulled it out, it's junk. So, clone the card, and then put whatever games it is that you want to play on this handheld in that games folder. As weird as it seems, it's going to save you a lot in the long run, because you won't have to go searching through numbered games that are out of alphabetical order. Now, I did talk about the joysticks when we were opening up, but this does have 3D joysticks. Any joystick that may makes a 300 dimensional, whatchamacallit, is a 3D joystick. It does have the shoulder buttons, the L1 and R1. It does have that single front facing speaker. It has a 2000 milliamp battery. One of the only actual stats I could find in this thing. It's charging interface is a type A to type C. It does not support C to C from what I'm gathering here. It does have that 3.5 headphone hole in the bottom down here or audio hole right down there. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna test a couple games on here and then we're gonna open it up and just see what's inside. I could be blown away, I don't think I'm gonna be. This is a very, very light device, uh, especially for its size. Typically what you're gonna see is something heavier than this for this size. Now, this isn't exactly an RGB 20 clone either, which is what I wanna call it because of the smiley face, but it actually is measurably smaller than an RGB 20. But when it comes to weight, I'd say this probably weighs, actually I'm almost positive, I think this weighs less than an SF2000. Let's find out. We'll weigh in the SF2000 first. And that SF2000 weighs in at 160 grams on the nuts. All right. Now, this is a very popular handheld in the budget category. If you're not familiar with it, you can pick these up for about 15 bucks. And if you're okay with a little screen tearing, uh, and some of it can be fixed through some software updates, this is actually a pretty decent handheld for a starter or for a child who has never been into this before. Again, this just has a single L1 R1, so it should be fairly similar to this. So that was 160 grams, and that's coming in against the X5 at 142 grams. So roughly 15, 16 grams lighter than the SF2000, which is a very light handheld. If you've ever held one before, very light. This is even lighter. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. It's going to do a trust fall. We're going to start with Neo Drift here on Neo Geo. This is a really good one for checking screen tearing. If you're going to get screen tearing on a game from some of these older retro systems, this game almost always will get it for you. It'll even get to the point where the screen will start overlapping if it, you really start to run out of memory. And for some reason, this just uses way more memory than it really needs to for what it does. So you'll see all kinds of different weird goofy screen things. So the textures are a little weird, but the screen doesn't seem to be ripping apart yet. So I think we're going to be okay. Now we got a little Dick Tracy here on the old Sega Genesis. I can't remember if it does diagonals on this game or not. 
Maybe not. Yeah, it does. It's supposed to. Because I should be able to shoot those guys up there. And I can't shoot straight up. Yeah, so we got no diagonals. Well, even the joystick's not working, though. Now I'm confused. I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to kill those guys. I guess I could jump up there. Yeah, but there should be di there's diagonals in this game. I know there is. I don't know what's going on here, but we have no diagonals. We'll try another game out here quick, probably, because this is, yeah, we should have diagonals to be able to shoot the people across the street, including the fire hydrants and the phone booth, because you can't shoot up in this game. But even the joystick's not giving me diagonals, so now I'm confused. All right, we'll try something else out here real quick and just see what's going on. When you go to play Contra on here, it has the code, the up, up, down, down, left, right code in there for you already. Yeah, so I can still, I don't know what was going on with Dick Tracy, because I can do diagonals just fine on here. Oh, uh, maybe. Eh. So. I mean, it's not. Uh, I mean, it should have a little bit of movement. There's nothing. So it's either all or nothing. Because <laughs> if you move just a little bit, then it just wants to bounce every time. Weird. But, it, I mean, as far as playing with it, it's fine. I and mean, the joystick works on them, too. So now I don't know. Okay, we're going to do a little Street Fighter Turbo here on the uh, Super Famicom or SNES for you Westerners out there. Jesus. What is going on here? I can't do anything. Well, that's not good. This might not be good for fighting. I thought maybe it would, might work out all right, but... I mean, if you don't want to do stupid moves, then you're probably all right. Why the hell? This unfortunately did not have the SNES version of Super Mario Luigi's Island on it. But I can play the advanced version, which is what I tell people to play all the time anyways, when it's not working for them, because it's the same game, just done a different system. And it looks a little better, I think. I think they touched it up. Now I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure they touched it up. It does seem like it's running a little slow, though. So I'm not sure if it is, but it does feel... I don't know, it just doesn't... Something doesn't quite feel right. And it's going to be kind of hard to tell... Because I don't have any way to get into anything in the menu systems. So when you go into the functions here to go in the menus, your options are pretty limited. You're limited to resume, exit, save, load, and controls. And that is it. That doesn't give you options for pretty much anything else. And, oh, there's our control set up in here. Look at that. Um, oh, man, I didn't mean to do that. But there isn't, like, the select X, select A kind of thing to get out of here. Let's see if select start. So select start gets you back to the menu, so you don't need the function key, I guess. But select start start doesn't do anything, so that would make me think that this isn't a Arc OS backend. I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure this is a like a retro arena front end on a Batocera build of some sort, but I have been wrong about this before. Um, I know I recognize this build from a couple other handhelds. I can't think of what they are. I believe the M18 actually might be the same build, but I don't remember. So I'm playing Delta Force here on PS1. And it seems to be okay. Um, this is probably going to be the most grueling system you are going to be able to play on here. But so far, it seems all right. Oh, whoops. That wasn't very silent. I don't know which one shoots. I don't know where my volume went. Oh, there it goes. That's a stupid shoot button. I don't like that. How did I get in this crazy, this mode, this heat sink mode? There we go. Oh, my hands hit the volume while I'm playing. If you, if you put your hands together like I do when I play, it actually changes the volume up and down. I was wondering why it kept getting louder and quieter. I also got these crazy high pitched and crackling noises. So now it's getting crackling noises, which I know that those speakers make that anyways, but this is uh, much worse than what those speakers are doing. Maybe if I figured out what the controls were, this might be a little easier, but either way, it's uh, pretty fucking dumb. I'm out of bullets, that's right. Now I need to know what's inside this thing. So let's power down. We're gonna figure out what chipsets in here. That might give us a better idea of what should and shouldn't be able to play on here too, because you know, the PS1 played probably the best and sometimes that's true. I mean, you can run a PS1 off a potato sometimes, but there are other emulators that just can't play PS1, but that used to be the holy grail before PS2 emulation began. And you still don't see PS2 emulation on Linux handhelds, so. It's not really a, a big thing on the Linux side unless you're talking like full-blown, you know, SteamOS type Linux. 
where you have Proton, then, then maybe you'll see some PS2 and PS3 emulation, but I suppose I should pull this memory card out here before I break it. All right, is there anywhere? There we go. Whoa, settle down there, buddy. Is there an alarm set under this thing? What was that all about? I've never had that happen before, where it starts yelling at you when you open it. There wasn't even an inspection sticker on here. Well, now, now I'm confused. Hold on, we need, a, we need a pick. Screw it, we'll just use a metal one. Call it a day. This should be able to get in if there's a little tabbies on the inside. Is this thing glued together? What the? Maybe we won't use a metal one. What is going on? I was wondering why there wasn't any screws on the top. And I don't, oh no, it's not glued together. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on here. I don't think I've seen a device glued together since the M17. So I'm just going to hope that that's not the case here. Because that sucked. So there's a tab right there. Oh, I'm going to scratch this up. Man, I'm going to be so mad if I scratch the shit out of this. Not like it matters, but still make me mad. There we go. Hopefully I didn't break anything. Oh, it almost went back in. Oh, that was sucked. All right, let's make the corner. Can't just see one tab right here. Boy, that thing held in. Okay, don't do what I just did. That's not good for your battery. So this battery is soldered in, so that's always a really good sign of a high quality handheld. It is a 2000 milliamp battery though, so they weren't lying about that. So we have a heat sink over the top of our chip here. Is that what we got going on here? It seems to be what it is. This is how you hide it if you don't want to take everything off of it. VT569B. I don't know if I me if I recognize that. Let's take a look. That's not even a heat sink. It's literally just a piece of metal. It's not even like an aluminum heat sink. What the hell? Interesting. Well, I'll take a look online and see if I can't find it. It's not even evenly cut. It's just like literally somebody went through and is cutting sheet metal with the, with a the clipper. That's so weird. All right, so we'll put this back on, I guess. For I don't know why, but just because it was there to begin with. This uh, the screen's new. Came out uh, in in March, so that's pretty cool. There's really nothing else to see. Okay, well, let's put it back together. Where's the Wi-Fi? Isn't there supposed to be Wi-Fi on this thing? What? No Wi-Fi? Yeah, you know, I noticed thing even after pulling off that plastic screen cover, the screen is just diced up anyways from the factory. So I don't know if there's a second screen cover on here. Sometimes you do get them where there's a second one. Oh, I bet you there is another piece of film. And then so that gets scratched up. Like one is like, I don't even know. But they're like trying to put a screen cover over a screen cover, but that's what's going on here. It's either that or the laminate for the display, but either way, it looks terrible. Boy, that looks a lot better. Maybe now it's 4K. So what did we learn today? Well, I was really curious about this because it's just a cheap, you know, handheld and I wanted to know more about it. It just, for some reason, some of these fascinate me and every once in a while they catch my attention, which is when you see random videos for things like this. And this one really caught my attention. I'd say that it's not lying to you. It does what it says it's going to do, but it's also $30. And depending on the promos that are running, you probably could get pretty close, if not actually getting a an R36S, which is an exhausting handheld to continue to talk about because it is a budget king. It really is. It's held that crown for almost a year now. And just for the pricing, you're going to find that between $30 and $36, you're going to get a far better handheld with a known processor, community support behind it. It's worth the extra couple bucks, if it is even a couple bucks. I know I got one of mine for 28 bucks on promo on AliExpress. So they really do come down in price if you're willing to sit and wait for them. Or if you just don't need one and it, you just happen to come across it when it's on promo, which is what I did, you'll be able to get one like that. But if you're new into the game and you're impatient, this will do what it says it does. It'll play up to literally most PS1. PS1 actually ran better than Super Nintendo did, and I think it is a filter problem. Uh, we've seen this on a lot of devices lately where people are overdoing the filters on them. Unfortunately, in this menu system, you can't change anything. Even if you go under the settings on here, you don't have an option to change anything but the language and the volume. And then the other thing I was pointing out earlier too is there is a download folder. This download folder here is where your games will go if you drop them into the download folder. But other than that, you really don't have any options. You do have a search function that does work on here. There isn't a whole lot of options. This is like the one of like big chested dudes. Look at all the men without shirts on on this one. Usually they put women on here. Maybe that's why this one said for women and men because it's all set up for the ladies. Weird. Anyways, this is a decent device. You're never, you're never going to be able to play God of War on here. I can promise you that. What is... Oh, because it's hitting the back. I'm like, what is it doing? Watch this as a touch screen. Sounds like an old Blackberry Storm. It clicked when you pushed on it. You didn't have a I had, a I had two of them, so definitely used to that sound. This is a good device for somebody coming in that doesn't know anything about this hobby and really just wants something that's going to play. Similar to like what I would say to get for your kids that are, but you know, they're usually like 10 bucks or whatever that you can pick up at five below, which I don't understand the five below name because they're always 10 bucks there. Same kind of thing. This is a better quality handheld than those ones you get at five below. 
it just depends how much money do you want to spend on this or do you just want to surf around for a little bit and see if you can't find an R36 on promo. And I'm going to tell you right now, the value of an R36 over this X5 is going to be huge. You could possibly try to find an RGB 20S, but odds are pretty good they're still going to be way more expensive than even the R36 and this combined will probably be what you'll find the S24. And this isn't quite a one-for-one one on the S20. It is actually a smaller handheld, um, just dimensionally. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. That's under here somewhere. Just uh, write some comments down there. Typey, typey, typey. Let me know what you think about this handheld. Do you think it's any good of value at $30? Uh, would you buy it at $30? I'm sure you wouldn't. I already know your answer. But, you know, maybe you would. I did this so that you didn't have to. So you're welcome. But that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel. Also, check out one of these videos here at the end because it will make you smarter. Or me dumber if it's me that's in the video. Or it's just going to make you smarter. You'll learn something. I don't know what, but you're going to learn something from one of these videos. I can't make that promise, but odds are pretty good you're going to learn something. But that's all I got for you today. I'm out. Bye-bye.